guys, how's it going? So this is a long, long overdue video that I'm finally making after I got so many requests from you guys asking me how I revised for my biology AS and A level. To prep for this video, when I was sitting in trying to think of some of the tips that I wanted to share with you guys, I was going through my old notes, my old biology notes, and I had forgotten just how much there was. Like, I had pages and pages of notes and I was just thinking, I can't believe I sat and actually made all of this. So for any of you guys who are going through your A-levels right now, honestly, I, I feel your pain. And I know just how overwhelming exams can be, but if I can get through it, you can too. And let's just hope some of these tips that I share with you can make that journey just a little bit easier. So for those of you who are new here, firstly, hi and welcome. And secondly, just to give you a little bit of a background, I studied biology, maths and chemistry at A-level and I also did a psychology at AS. After I finished my A-levels, I went on to Newcastle University to do a degree in biomedical sciences and currently I'm studying my masters in translational cancer medicine at King's College London. So it's safe to say that I have had my fair share of exams. So what I did for this video is made a list of very specific things that I did just for A-level and AS biology. But in addition to this video, I have already made a video talking about a whole bunch of generic revision and study tips that I used for, you know, all kinds of subjects. And it's definitely something that you can apply to A-level biology as well. So if you want tips that are a little bit more generic, then I will link that video down below. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one is make sure that you read up on your exam board's specifications. The specifications are something that you should be able to find online and generally what they tend to be is a whole list of points that the course kind of wants you to learn by the end of it. So something I did when I was doing my A-levels, I remember printing off this whole list of specifications and as I was doing my revision, I would go through one by one, like throughout these points and make sure that I at least have a general idea of what they are, even if I haven't studied them specifically yet. And the best part about doing this is that you make sure that you don't accidentally skip over anything. Number two is use your curriculum book to make notes. Now, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter what exam board you're on, you will get given some kind of big, thick, chunky book full of loads of information. Now, this is kind of obvious, but not only will that help you, you know, just the process of making notes itself can help you learn, but also if you've got all of the information in kind of a compact note format, then it's so much easier for you to just go through later. And another really big um, tip that I would give that's kind of related to this point is after you've read through a chunk of, sec um, chunk of information and you've made your notes, make sure that you give yourself a couple of questions with like the specific answer at the bottom as well. If I can find from some of my own notes, I will leave a picture here of what my, some of my notes look like. But at the end of each section, I would have a couple of questions just because that way my brain would get used to the whole question and answer format. Number three is checklists. Oh my gosh, I love checklists. Not everybody agrees with me when it comes to checklists, but I think a really, really good way to chunk a large amount of data or information into small bite-sized pieces is by kind of going through and making categories and checklists for each of the categories so that as you go through your revision, you can just tick it off. It's just overall a very good feeling knowing that something's just been done. Number four, and this is a very, very important tip. And that is obviously when you're revising, you're not going to be sitting and revising the whole course in one day. Or if you do that, you're clearly a genius, but most of us mortals don't do that. So I would highly, highly recommend that when you're coming to the end of one of your revision sessions, make sure that you write somewhere the areas that you want to improve on more or the areas which you've struggled with in that particular session. So by making sure that you've taken note of what you need to do, then next revision session, you can start with that difficult bit first, get it out of the way, and then move on to your next thing. That's something that definitely helped me a lot. Number five is making a keywords sheet for the chapters that you go through. Again, I will put a picture here of what some of my checklists would look like, not checklists, sorry, um, what my keyword section would look like. 
but this is something that helped me a lot because especially when it comes to biology when there are you know so many long and new and complicated words it's always nice to have that right next to you because as soon as you read the keyword you're just like oh yeah that sparked off this thing this area this topic or whatever and that's just a really good way for you to make sure a you know the words and b you know the area number six is test yourself this is something I always struggled with because I'm somebody who just naturally loves to make notes so I would kind of you know get lost in the process of writing notes for hours and hours and hours and I would forget how important it is to actually test myself and say okay so you've made all these notes but do you actually know them and the specific method that you want to use to test yourself can completely vary based on your person so you can either make cue cards, you can write some questions down and ask a friend or a family member to you know ask them to you and you can explain it and this very much depends on your own personality and learning style but as I said the revision video that I uploaded and um, which I will link below that might have some handy tips in there for you so you can find better ways of testing yourself but please do it it's so important learn from my mistakes number seven is get as much visual aid as you possibly can. Again, because biology is one of those subjects where there are a lot of schematic diagrams and a lot of pictures and, you know, um, when you have like cycles and things like that, it's a very visual topic. And a really, really good way to learn the information is to get blank pictures um, of those diagrams and then just annotate them. And similar to note making, not only is it useful for you to have the an annotated diagram, but the process of actually writing the notes and writing the annotations on that diagram is itself a really good way for you to revise the content. Number eight is finding different ways to try and understand something that you might find a little bit tricky. So just to give you an example, because I think it'll help um, when it comes to describing what I mean, is when I was learning about mitosis and meiosis, that was an area that I found particularly tricky. So what I did, again, I'll insert a picture of my notes right here, um, I divided it up into chunks. So I would draw pictures of what they were like, I would make notes right next to them, and just having that side-by-side -side comparison of visually this is what's happening and also in words what's happening that was a really good way for me to just break down the process and try and digest it a little bit better number nine and again this might be an obvious one is use past papers but generally there are quite a few ways of using past papers but the two methods that helped me out the most was either categorizing like going through lots and lots of past papers and categorizing all of the questions into word documents so for example i would go through papers for the last four years and then put all of like the meiosis questions on one word document and put all of the phosphorylation questions on one word document and then after i finished revising those sections i would go through and test myself and you know answer them so that's one way of doing it and that's definitely the way i like doing it because as i said i'm really into like making checklists and categorizing everything but another way of doing it is going through all of your notes and all of your own revision first and then leaving all of those papers just to test yourself later in hindsight i sort of wish that i had save more papers to test myself later because what I had done is I had gone through literally all of the papers and compartmentalized all of the questions so later on I already had like cookie cutter answers to all of those questions so I didn't test myself as much as I should have so those were my nine tips if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful please give it a thumbs up and if you would like to support me I will have links to my patreon and my Etsy down below Okay my lovelies, I am going to head off, but as always, if you have any more questions to do with A-levels or school or university or anything in general, feel free to leave your comments below and I will do my best to try and get to you. Or even make a video response. Who knows? So, until next time, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah!